I wanted to start the year with a few remarks. Um, it, is, it has been a difficult summer for the world. Uh, in many ways, it has been a difficult time in higher education, a difficult time for colleges and universities across the country. But the start of a school year is always a hopeful time. And today I want to talk about hope. New students, you arrive with high hopes for your college journey. You carry with you the hopes of your families, your friends, all those who have wished you well. Faculty, you arrive with high hopes for fall courses, eager to meet the students on this first day of class, eager to mentor students in research and creative projects over the coming year. Staff and administrators, we start the year with high hopes for the initiatives we have planned for the coming year and worked on over the summer. And over the year, these hopes will translate into achievements, such as the achievements we have celebrated today with the award of prizes. We will also celebrate the singular achievement, commencement, graduation, and then the cycle will begin anew. It is this continuing cycle of aspiration, followed by effort, followed by achievement, renewed by new aspiration, that makes colleges such hopeful places. Perhaps the most important symbol of our hopefulness at this time of the year is the theme of our new student orientation, one community. The theme echoes the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the beloved community, the beloved community towards which he worked a community characterized by social justice and true understanding. The path to the beloved community entails dialogue and empathy and nonviolence. It is a path to resolution of social, economic, and political conflict. We chose the name One Community with the word unity bolded inside the word community to reflect our, our reputation and our aspiration as an institution that values and celebrates our student body's diversity, a diversity that reflects the increasingly multiracial transformation of this country. You likely all know that this fall, for the first time in the nation's history, the overall number of Latino, African American, and Asian students in public K-12 classrooms will surpass the number of non-Latino whites. This is the promise of America. This is our future. But the theme, one community, requires of us something much deeper than the mere recruitment or representation of different kinds of people. One community, the community to which we aspire, is a place where diversity walks hand in hand with unity, with respect, with inclusion, with full participation in every educational opportunity. Calling our orientation activities one community is only a step in that direction. The hurdles are high. How can we be one community in a nation where segregation by income, by race, by political perspectives is rapidly increasing? How can we be one community with Ferguson, Missouri, the site of the tragic killing of Michael Brown, just three hours to our south? How can we be one community in a nation when for the last quarter century, Inequality of educational outcomes has widened, and schools have become increasingly segregated even as the nation has become more multiracial. How can we be one community when residential segregation by income has increased during the past three decades across the nation? And ironically, the most rapidly growing metropolitan areas in the nation have shown the greatest increase in segregation. How can we be one community 
when political polarization is widening, the Pew Research Center calls it the defining feature of 21st century American politics. How can we be one community when we tune each other out by consuming only the media that confirms our biases and is consistent with our prejudices? And finally, how can we be one community in a world where war and brutality have riven the Middle East, where medical resources are inadequate to stop the spread of Ebola across West Africa, and climate change is producing disruption across the entire planet? Against the growing divisiveness, inequality, violence, and disruption, the theme of one community could easily seem a marketing slogan, a bumper sticker, a tagline, something instrumental and shallow. What do we really mean when we say one community is the theme of our orientation? Are we suggesting that we have tried enough, that the present state of affairs is sufficient? Are we suggesting that we now all think alike and agree on how to achieve the promise? Of course not. Many, myself included, would say that Knox is not one community, that there is exclusion, unfairness, insensitivity, here on a daily basis. Just last spring, a group of student activists under the banner of their name, Diversity Initiative, stood us outside Old Main and talked about their experiences at Knox, sharing their criticism of the college and calling us to be better. They stood in a long tradition of student activism in which many of our faculty and staff colleagues, including me, participated in decades past. But in the face of violence, of polarization, of divisiveness, of injustice, today I want to remind us that there is something special about Knox, and that is the extraordinarily rare opportunity this college affords for all of us to break patterns of exclusion and segregation. Most of us have come here from neighborhoods and schools segregated by income, by race, by ethnicity, enforced by power differentials. And thus, for most of us, this will be the first time in our lives that we might share a home, a community, close quarters, with someone not from our neighborhood, not in our family, not in the same socioeconomic stratum from which we came, not even from our country. And this is the opportunity. This is the gift, the opportunity for each of us to reach out, to stretch, to listen, and to learn. It is an opportunity every bit as transformative as the opportunity to study physics or Japanese or economics. The opportunity to start a new club, to design your own interdisciplinary major, all of these are opportunities, but let us never forget the opportunity created by coming together across difference. For new students, uprooted from your familiar surroundings, the temptation will surely be to seek people out who are just like you, to wrap yourself in the cocoon of the familiar. And that seeking out of people with whom you fit is part of college. But let us try a different path. Let us in the year ahead resolve to move closer to our goal of one community by seeking out those most different from us, by listening to a different point of view, by endeavoring to understand it, to see the world as another sees it, to see our nation as other nations see us, to see ourselves as others see us, privileged in some ways, perhaps not in others. Try every week to listen to someone else's music, 
Attend a program by a club to which you do not belong. Seek out a blog or a website with which you profoundly disagree. In other words, break the rules of exclusion and conformity that increasingly separate us from others and that are driving this society and this world toward greater violence and injustice. Act as though you already lived in a truly multicultural world that goes beyond tolerance to celebration, a world of social justice, a world where nonviolence is the everyday practice for the resolution of difference. The nation needs you, the world needs you, the college needs you to build bridges across difference, to listen respectfully to the voices with which you disagree, and to transform yourself so that society may be transformed. Last spring, in response to the diversity initiative's concerns, the college held a, a town hall meeting attended by approximately 200 faculty, staff, and students. Soon, the dean of the college will distribute the notes from that meeting over email so that all of us can be reminded of what our fellow community members told us. We have already scheduled another town hall meeting for next spring, a time for us to check in and see if we have made progress in learning how to live together in a new way. I'll invite you now and we'll invite you again. Join us next May and share your perspective on how we have done this year. So as we stand poised at the beginning of a new academic year at Knox, I am profoundly hopeful, profoundly hopeful. I want to share with you some thoughts on hope from the Czech playwright and dissident Václav Havel. For decades before the breakup of the Soviet Union, Havel fought the communist regime in Czechoslovakia, and he was often imprisoned for his activism. After leading the nonviolent revolution, he became the first democratically elected president of Czechoslovakia in 1989. But before that, before that triumph, he wrote these, book, these words in a book called Disturbing the Peace. The kind of hope I often think about, especially in situations that are particularly hopeless, I understand above all as a state of mind not a state of the world. Either we have hope within us or we don't. It is a dimension of the soul. It is not essentially dependent on some particular observation of the world or estimate of the situation. Hope is not prognostication. It is an orientation of the spirit, an orientation of the heart. So now you see why I've selected that quote. One community, new student orientation, an orientation of the heart. It is not about what is probable or likely. It is not a forecast. It is not an extrapolation of present trends. It lies within. It is at the heart of this college. Hope, an orientation toward the future, towards one community. Why is this college hopeful? Because learning is the most hopeful human activity of all. It is in schools that I acquired a hopeful orientation of the heart. Because schools are built on a foundation of learning. Learning through trial and error. Learning, a leap of faith into the unknown, the unfamiliar, the uncomfortable. Learning, the repetitive act of battering against a barrier of confusion until it finally yields to understanding. The transformation of human society, the future, rests on learning. And as I often say, you will learn the most from the people the least like you. Welcome to the new year of learning, of transformation of this community, of progress toward one community, a year of hope. And with today's start of classes, I now pronounce this academic year, fall 2014, officially begun. May it be a wonderful year.